Hi, Rodrigo. Uh, thank you for joining this call and uh, helping us understand the situation in Venezuela right now. So a lot has been happening uh, for the past few days. And you had presidential elections on Sunday. Uh, Maduro is accused of electoral fraud. We see people on the streets protesting for days with the opposition claiming the victory. Can you explain for everyone what is actually going on? First of all, I uh, thank you, Jelena and Canvas, for this opportunity. And okay, so um, to make a little bit of a, of a summary, uh, a quick summary, um, there was an election on the 28th of July, a presidential, presidential election. And what happened here is that um, people went to massively vote. And uh, after finding out the results of the vote, people spontaneously went to protest. So the thing is that um, the CNE, which is a National Electoral Council, said that Maduro, the actual president, president of Venezuela, um, was re-elected. However, when they did this, they didn't show any of the ballots, of the electoral ballots. So any possible audit has, hasn't happened yet. So there's not official news or there's not official audit about the elections. So what they did is they, they re-elected Maduro without actually confirming that he won. After that, protests went spontaneously around Venezuela in all of the states. You can see, you can see them everywhere. So it's not focalized, it's in every part of the country. And what happened afterwards is that crackdown and repression came from security forces, which is very, very um, important to, to, to highlight. Because the thing is that this has happened before and it's been very, very bad for Venezuelan people. However, what I've seen through news and Twitter and everything is that um, people are being very resilient in the protests. And uh, leading to the election day, um, it is important to note that elections happened in a context that is not free and fair competition, where Maduro administration repressing the political opposition. How were they able to achieve uh, this result despite constant obstruction and repression? Okay, um, this is a very important question, and I think there is a lot of nonviolent struggle um, theory behind this. So I'm going to put a little bit of context here. So I think that uh, the opposition and Maria Corina Machado, which is uh, the main leader of the movement, actually made three things that are very important for a nonviolent struggle to actually be effective. So, so the first one is that um, Maria Corina Machado managed to unify all of uh, all of the opposition behind her. So what they did in this first um, unity it was that they managed to make a electoral, electoral primaries so that they could choose one leader. And in that case, Maria Corina Machado got elected through the people. The thing is that it's very important to highlight, highlight in this case is that um, the primaries were completely, completely made from civil society. There was no um, participation from um, the electoral, the National Electoral Council, the CNE, and it was all civil society. So people actually trusted the process for her election as the electoral candidates. So after she got elected, all of the opposition managed to unify behind her. So this is very important. Second of all, is that um, she has incrementally had have small wins around after she got elected. So after she got elected as a, as a presidential candidate in the primaries, she had many obstacles around her So from the Maduro regime. So what she did was actually to surpass every obstacle in a way, and she would communicate and celebrate each win every time she had them so that she could actually motivate and help bring people some kind of hope around the process. So and I'm going to make a small example of this. So um, after she got elected from the primaries, she couldn't be selected to participate in the presidential election because there's not transparency around the process. It's, it's as simple as that. So um, when she was not able to be elected as a 
presidential candidate in, in the National Electoral Council, she elected uh, or she selected a substitute, a substitute that was called, that is called Corina Joris, which is an academic and it, it's, a, it's a very close figure to Maria Corina Machado. When they went to um, go and choose her, like to participate in the presidential election, she couldn't appear also in the in the in the system, so she couldn't be elected. She couldn't be selected for the process. So meanwhile, when when that was all happening, political parties had to put a, a figure or a person that would protect the only political parties um, that were legalized in such a way to participate in the election, which is the mood, uh, which is a, the main um, political opposition party, which is the, the, unitary, the unitary platform, and other two parties, um, which chose Edmundo Gonzalez. This, this person who was going to protect the, the, the political parties in the election is Edmundo Gonzalez, and he's somebody that nobody knows. So what at the end happened is that Maria Corina Machado, with with the small wins and with all the small wins that she was able to 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 capitulate, she managed to choose a presidential candidate that she would that she would support and also would do campaign for him. So it, it was like a it was like a, a one two. It was a it was a companionship. So she managed to make small wins all around the process. Not only that one, there were many others, but those are the more the most symbolic ones. And she also could adapt to the to the situations. She's so the actually the important thing was to participate and win. That was like the the end of it. And the third thing that I I find very important in the in the nonviolent struggle um theory that I think she applied is that um she managed to do dilemma actions. So. She managed to put the regime, Maduro's regime, in a lose-lose situation that could affect. Um, it doesn't matter what option he would take. The Maduro regime is it was going to be a lose situation. So the first one was that if Maria Corina Machado and Edmundo Gonzalez could win the election, they had to demonstrate it by the voting ballots, which every uh, every party in in the election has. Uh, the, has ballots that they can count for. So um, what they did is that they proved that they had the ballots and they had the voting, the the the, the voters. And the thing is that Maduro had to accept the defeat. That's the first part. That's the dilemma action number one, the loose situation. Or he would have to commit fraud and go to another step of repression and, um, well, the things that we're the things that we're watching right now. So, um, I think that Maria Corina Machado was very very intelligent to put Maduro's regime in this situation because he had to choose between two losing uh, options and he took one of them um, in this case. And we're watching uh, right now all the problems that Maduro regime has with legitimacy and uh, with the international community that is asking for National Electoral Council to publish the votes and publish the tallies, the voting tallies, so that, that everybody can see them and, and actually make a uh, account of who won the election. And the other thing is that doing that, there must be uh, internal conflict for the Maduro regime, because um, although we don't know exactly what's happening inside, there must be conflict between different factions inside to recognize or not, or go to repress or not, the protests. So I think that's in, in 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 summary. I think that's three things that Maria Maria Corina Machado did very good. She made unity in the opposition. She unified every person in every opposition leader. Two, she had small wins. She, she you could see her timeline, and she made small wins every time. And three, she managed to put the regime into a dilemma action of a loose loose situation. So um. What comes next? Um, what do you believe is the best path forward? Okay, um, I expect, and this is what I want. I don't know if this is going to happen. It's very important to to name this, but um, I hope that a peaceful transition comes around. Um, there's probably a very difficult moment for the dominant coalition right now. 
there could be cracks inside there and, and it could make a possible a peaceful transition between some of Maduro's um, um, leaders and the opposition to actually recognize uh, Edmundo Gonzalez as the winner of the election. That would be the best case scenario. And that's the scenario I want to happen because it will be a peaceful transition and organized transition to democracy, or at least mm, somehow it would help. Uh, although there's other scenarios, I think this is the best one for, this is the best for everyone, for uh, Chavismo and for the opposition in in the next days. And what, I want to say a few words to the people who are over there in, in Venezuela right now. Um, to say resilient, resilient, uh, I mean, it's very important to not lose hope, although repression could can be very hard to to manage in, in, even though it's it's it could be i mean like a problem of mental health and people get loose hope or or just they feel down about it um i see a different perspective or a different way of handling things from the opposition i i i ask them to trust them although it's very, very hard because people are information all the time and want to know what ha what is happening but uh, I tell them don't lose hope be resilient be be very careful because of the repression and don't try to do things that are going to be very very dangerous in, in, in the meantime be very peaceful do peaceful protests and yes don't lose hope I think um, we have to trust leadership in Maria Cor Machado, Mundo Gonzalez, and your position right now. Thank you, Rodrigo, so much. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you.